a great gospel for me to speak on after talking about being at peace last night, huh? I didn't come to set a peace, peace on earth. That's nice, Jesus, thank you. But the reality is this. The peace, of course, he's talking about is peace with other people, that we're all going to get along. And whenever we stand for what's right, sometimes we might cause division. I know this from personal experience. But we need to have peace in our heart as we do it. That what I do, I do for God. And this is his will. And so it doesn't mean we're politically correct. And it doesn't mean everybody's going to get along and agree with everything we say. But it does mean we're going to have peace in the midst of the conflict. We still speak his will. And that's when we go back to this, the first reading. And he talks about, you know, to take your bodies and no longer make them slaves of sin, but now make them slaves of Christ. And we've talked about that. Later on in the 12th chapter of Romans, we'll hear in chapter, one, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, offer to God your bodies as a living sacrifice. So, to be a living sacrifice for God, meaning that we're alive, but we're being sacrificed as we're alive. This is the call for God for each of us every day, that the Spirit comes and sets us on fire, if we will, and we become this living sacrifice, that we're dying and yet we're burning. It goes back all the way to the Old Testament where you see Moses and God appears as the flaming bush. The bush is alive, and yet it's burning. And so we need to become those same type people. And the way we do that, of course, is we focus not on ourselves, but on Jesus within us. You know, the last couple days of adoration, we've made these spiritual communions, you know, spiritual communions uh, in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And I've always thought of that as being redundant. Why? Because it's not like, even though my, the, the priest I live with thinks, you know, like when you and I receive communion today, how long does Jesus stay within us? Well, some people say, like the priest I do, Jesus stays within us for about 20 minutes, and then he leaves. Really? That's not the teaching of the church, let me give you a hint. It's a theological, piecal thought. But what do you think? Jesus sits here as soon as you receive communion. Okay, tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. 19 minutes, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. 30 seconds, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. 10 seconds, da 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 boop, goodbye. Or do you think he leaves you when you go to the bathroom? Huh? Okay, goodbye, Jesus, sorry, here we go. That we play this game with Almighty God. The day you and I got baptized, this is what we believe. Christ took up residence inside of us. We became temples of the living God, right? When my favorite verse of scripture, which I told you the other day, which I'm sure you'll have forgotten by now, Galatians 2.19 I know I have been crucified with Christ, so life I live now is no longer mine. What's the next line? Christ lives inside of me. That's what we believe, that he lives inside of us, that we are the very tabernacles of God. Now, again, when I used to teach my boys, I'd sit there and say, gentlemen, you would never, ever go and do something impure with your girlfriend in front of the tabernacle of the cathedral, right? Because the cathedral was our chapel. And I'd say, you'd never do anything impure with your girlfriend in front of the tabernacle, would you? And they'd all say, no, Father, that's disgusting. How can you ever say it? And I'd say, then you better not do it anywhere else. Why? Because Jesus lives inside of you. Again, too many Catholics, sometimes us priests too, we play this game. I'm really holy, holy, holy in church. Holy, holy, holy. And then I go out and I talk about people and I kill people in the, the parking garage or parking lot after mass. And not the, But I was really holy and I received communion. Really? If you're not holy out there, I don't care how you are in here, it doesn't matter. We need to be men of integrity. We are who we are no matter where we are because Jesus Christ lives inside of us. And if we're temples of the living God, if God lives inside of us, he lives inside of you when you're sleeping, he lives inside of you when you're with your brothers, he lives inside of you if you're having a beer with some friends, he's inside of you, and so we should always be acting and living as if we're in the very presence of God because we are. To be a living sacrifice means we die to ourselves and Jesus Christ lives inside of us. And what we do is we get out of the way and so people see Jesus. And yet we forget. Sometimes again, we, and sometimes we teach this to our people. You become holy, holy in church and then you can do what you want out there. Don't you dare. We need to be just as holy out there as if we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Always. Because we are. Jesus lives inside of us. And so we need to live as if Jesus lives inside of us. Huh? And so when I would tell those boys, they would sit there and say, Father, you know I hate you, 
But the reality is this. St. Paul, you know, some people think I'm kind of crass. And when I talk about things, you know, like, I think you're crass, Father. Read Paul. Paul is very crass. He says, what happens if you have sex with a prostitute? Here's St. Paul. It's right in the scripture. Who do you make have sex with a prostitute, according to St. Paul? Jesus Christ. That's what Paul says. You make Christ have sex with a prostitute if you do those things. So he was very clear that once we are in Christ, we are in Christ. And whatever we do, we make Christ do, especially priests. Because we've been configured to Christ, in the persona of Christ. You know, we, Christy, we love to sit there and tell people that I'm in the persona of Christy. Well, are you thinking that when you're being tempted to sin? I'm in persona of Christy. The Christ lives inside of you. And whatever I do, I make Jesus Christ do because of that reality. And when you and I start thinking that way, then the temptation when we're being struggling, let's say, Jesus, I can't deal with this temptation. Would you deal with it, please? And you let him take over. When you're dealing with people you don't like, <laughs> would you deal with this person, please? And let him take over. When you're struggling and you're high crazy for whatever reason, Jesus, would you give me your peace, please? Help me to focus on you. That no matter where we are, Jesus is. Now, gentlemen, we're not Jesus. But Jesus lives inside of us. And we need to live this every moment of every day. May you know his love today and forever. Amen. <laughs>